So you remember the interview that we had conducted uh, with uh, the mother of uh, Daryl George, uh, the young man at the Barbers Hill uh, High School, so the campus uh, recently had made some headlines multiple times for what many believe is a race and gender discrimination, which it is, has transferred the young brother uh, to an alternative school. Remember that Ali and them was discussing this in the interview because he refused to cut his locks. Now school officials referred Daryl George to the disciplinary program because he simply would not adhere to the district's dress code. It said Daryl George's mother received notice on October 11th from the school principal, Lance Murphy, about her son being referred to the disciplinary alternative education program after he was put in school suspension Tuesday, August 31st, which is almost right at the beginning of the school year regarding his hair. Uh, they said, as the school principal, it's out determined that your child has engaged in chronic or repeated disciplinary infractions that violate the district's previously communicated standards of conduct. Now, I say these infractions, I said, and the administrator said, were the disruption of the ISS classroom. What? Him sitting in there is a disruption? See, this I'm white and I say so crap. This is why I don't want my child in any school where they running it. I just don't because you're attacking that child for the hair to come out of his head, not nothing else. And the boy had his hair tied up anyway, so it wasn't affecting nothing. And you still act in this way because you have this. I'm white and I say so, and I'm going to be a white supremacist. They continue to say the failure to comply with directives from staff and administration. They said Murphy also said that in addition to violating the dress and groom policy, the 18 year old was always late. Now they say his attorney, you know, sister Allie Booker say who represents George and his family says this is retaliation because the parents have decided to sue. He said the school district's recent action according to Booker is a reaction to the ongoing legal dispute about his locks hairstyle. They said the family contends that the young man usually wears his hair in braids or a ponytail and that the hair does not pass his eyes or ears. Technically, George's family and attorneys argue that it does not breach dress code restrictions. Is that the school and the district would not buzz saying the hair length is too long for male students in the district in a time period where we don't discriminate on gender, right? They say before this, school authorities had warned the young man and his family that the consequences linked to his persistent dress code violation would lead to a referral to an alternative program. And as they understand the consequence, the family continues to stand on their belief that the rule violated their civil rights and even sued Governor Greg Abbott, the state's attorney general, and the school officials for uh, failing to enforce the law and protect the team. And say this law is say that the lawyers are pointing to is the Crown Act, they say, which is engaged, enacted on the day George was placed on an in-school suspension. Now, in 2020, the school faced a similar controversy involving two male students who wore their hair in locks and DeAndre Arnold and Caden Bradford was also placed on in school suspension, which prompted their mothers to take action. Instead of focusing on the racial implication, it's implied by the hair bias. These students mothers focus on implicit gender bias in the policy. It said the district allowed girls to have long hair, but not boys. It said the mother sued the school district, alleging that the district's hair link restriction, which applied to solely male students constitutes sex discrimination under the 14th amendment, equal protection clause title, uh, nine of the education of members in 1972, the DO DOJ agreed with the parents. And this move was critical to the crown act getting passed. They say in George's case, the legal team is focused on how uh, the school is violating the law. They said the district has tried to get out of this lawsuit stating that this is no viol way of violation of the crown act and even filed a motion in the U S district court of, of the Southern district of Texas for dismissal. But a judge over the case denied their request on Wednesday, October 11th. So this is enough evidence and say for lawyers to claim retaliation, another violation of Georgia civil rights. Say today they filed a motion to pull the case out of federal court and the judge struck the motion say for non-compliance with court rules. So they retaliated by putting Daryl and say in the alternative school, according to what Ali was saying. Now it said George will be sent to the school immediately until November 29th and a move that allows for no appeal for the family. They saying we'll uh, be allowed back to BHHS until November 30th. They said the young man would have been under some form of disciplinary action by the school for the majority of the school semester that ends December 21st. They said last day before winter break. Now, I saw comments last time 
when we did that, you know, we posted the interview. The interview, if you go to the channel uh, page, the interview is right there. You can see it. You don't have to go looking for it. I saw some comments that said, well, why don't she just pull him out of school? And I even asked that same question, you know, but once I was explaining the situation, well, you know, some people have the ability to do that. Some people, you know, have the ability to put their kids in certain schools, et cetera, but not everybody can. And at the same time, we are taxpayers as black Americans. Public schools should be accessed by black Americans too. If you don't want us accessing public schools, then leave our tax dollars alone. Just, just we don't pay taxes. That's it, right? Nobody should be discriminated against. Period. For hair, color, religion, etc., gender, whatever. So he has a right to be there, and you know you have to understand the way we got a lot of things in this country is by standing up and taking a stand, suing protesting, et cetera. That's how we gain a lot of foothold, um, in this country. So that fight and, and it's going to be in the federal court. That's good. They don't want to fight a federal lawsuit. They really don't because under federal standards is a lot, you know, more scrutiny under federal standards than it would be under state. So I'm glad the case is going to be in federal court and yeah, they should take a stand. They should because it's just straight discrimination. It is racial discrimination and also gender discrimination. If girls can have long hair, then boys can have it too. It's just that simple. I know they got girls with hair longer than what they said. So no, we, we can't, we don't live in a day where we can discriminate, right? That's the world we live in. But let me know what y'all think about, you know, this particular story here. Uh, we're going to definitely keep an eye on this story as more information comes out.